What was that? That's the Foster's website. Oh, <laughs> it makes a sound like that electric sign, you know. Or, or, or. Yeah. What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Foster's Premium Ale Examination. Hello, this is Louisiana Beer Reviews reporting into California. <laughs> Maybe next year I might drive to California. It's been 10 years since I drove to California. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, I drove out there. I might have somebody going with me this time. Last time, nobody could. The people I wanted to go couldn't go, and the people that could have gone didn't want to go. But, um, yeah, I wanted to go to all the major league ballparks out there. Go see the Padres. Yeah, so I made a road trip. Drove in my car. I made a circle. I went to Phoenix, San Diego, Anaheim, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Oakland, Denver, back to Arlington, Texas, and then back home. It took two weeks. It's no joke. It took me two weeks. It took so long. Wow. Because, well, I don't I don't want to get into the whole story. It just took a long time because it's long to get out there, first of all. And then the games yeah. didn't all line up. I had to spend three nights in San Francisco. I had to spend a night in Oakland. And it was just a long, drawn-out thing. But it was fun. I mean, it was a, it was like the best trip I ever went on, aside, yeah. aside from going to Canada once. That, well, I've been to Canada many times, but the big Canada trip 15 years ago, that was awesome, man. Yeah. We drove to Nova Scotia. Wow, that must be awesome. Go all over the place like that. We do, yeah, we drove to Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, Quebec, Ontario, went to Niagara Falls, all kind of stuff. But anyway, this is not about traveling. <laughs> In a way it is, isn't it? Okay, you want me to go pour my beer? I, I don't want to pour it sitting here because you know they spill. Yeah. Those 25.4 ounce cans spill. Nice golden color on this beer. Initial sip was bitter in my opinion. Kind of got the malty taste going on there. Maybe a little bit of sour apple. Mm. All right, it did start spilling. I mean, I was right next to the sink and it started spilling. <laughs> it started spilling and um. I had to wipe some of it up, but at least it wasn't spilling on this nice desk. And um, you can show the can. I just put the can back in the fridge. But um, <clears throat> look at this big, thick white head. Oh, it's off yeah. white head. This looks like a big sponge. Yeah, I know. It's pretty nice. And somebody bought this glass for me. This glass is probably 50 years old or older. Pretty awesome. But, yeah, this glass is probably from 1955. And I think they paid a dollar for it at a thrift store. Is the recipe for Falstaff out there? Because I was going to think maybe somebody could try to recreate it. Well, it's owned by Pabst. Supposedly, they put it out on the market about once every five years, and they make like one batch of it. That's wow. just so they can sell it and say that they still own the copyright. Because if you don't, produce something for a number of years, you'll lose the copyright and then anyone can use it. So, but they should put it, I don't know, they told me that nobody was buying it. Well, I guess so, nobody even knew about it. They didn't promote it. Now, you did some research on this beer, Keone? You've had it before, huh? Yeah, I had it. <clears throat> the, only, the only research I did was just on the Foster's factory in general. Like I was saying from the last um, video, I didn't look too much about this one. I just know, like you were saying, it used to be called the bitter ale. The can yeah, has a 
Foster's yeah. Premium Bitter. Huh? 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 It was called Foster's Premium Bitter. Yeah. Now they say on the Foster's website now, I'm looking right now, the Foster's Lager is available in the cans, the little 12 ounce cans, the little 12 ounce bottles, which I showed you that. Yeah. And on draft, they said Foster's Ale is available in the big cans that we're drinking out of and on draft. I sure would like to try it on draft. Yeah, that would be excellent. Everything better on draft. Mm. They're, they're saying it's brilliant copper appearance. Sits beneath an enormously foamy head. Well, that ain't no lie. Yeah, that's definitely <laughs> true. But, of course, the copper comes from caramel color that's added. If you look at the can, it says caramel color added. Yeah, that, in a way, that kind of sucks because I don't feel like they need to shoehorn anything in to get me to buy the beer. I don't either, but I think the problem is that if they put it out there without the coloring, it would just look yellow like the regular Fosters, and then which would be fine because it would just be a pale ale. So I don't know. They got some idea that they need to make it an amber ale, but that's their at least they're honest and tell you that they put coloring in it. Yeah. Um. Let me see what they're saying about the flavor. They say uh, a nicely balanced maltiness accentuated by rich caramel notes and a slightly sweet character. Let's see. It smells like an ale. You know, it's got that fruitiness. Barley malt. I guess they use corn. Yeah. It says earthy beer. Earthy, that means it tastes like dirt. Yeah. <laughs> that's a fancy way. That's a fancy way of saying it tastes like dirt. Um maybe, but it certainly has a caramel finish, like they say. Yeah. I do taste caramel. I also kind of the bitterness kind of reminds me of like a sour apple kind of note. Yeah. This beer might have been around for almost as oh as long as Foster since 1887. I don't know. Because we've seen pictures on the internet of bottles of Foster's Bitter. Yeah. Not sold in Australia anymore, just a lager, because if you get on the Foster's website, on the Australian site, there's no mention of bitters. And I talked to people in Australia and they said they never seen it. So it's apparently only sold in America. Now let me click on Foster's Group. Now this beer here is, I know it's made in Texas, Fort Worth, <laughs> but that's not oil can, that's Miller. There's a huge Miller brewery on the highway, right on the main highway. And <clears throat> when you leave in Fort Worth, you'll see this huge brewery. It's been there for about 45, 50 years. And all the people in Texas up in that area know about that uh, brewery. Cause a lot of them probably work there. <sighs> Now, when you click on Foster's Group, it brings up the thing we were looking at yesterday, Cub, Carlton United Breweries. Um, it's a real old company. Now, like they were saying, Foster's is handled by Heineken in Europe. It's not owned by Heineken, but somehow they got a contract to distribute it. So they're kind of like in cahoots, like Miller and Heineken are, wow. SAB and Heineken are, are kind of in cahoots. I know. I know what happened. Uh, and you might have heard this on the news about uh, in May or June. Miller tried to buy Heineken, but they turned him down. Oh yeah, I heard something like that too. I think Chris was also talking about that afterwards. So something's getting ready to go down. Let's see. Eighteen fifties are showing. Cracker City Brewery. Brewery. <laughs> Cracker City Brewery. Man, Miller's bigger than I thought it was. If you ever look on the SAB Miller website, I'm telling you right now, it will take you all day to go through each of the beers they own. And they're only showing some of them. 
like they're saying, look at some of the beers we make. You all, right. all day. I mean, it's impossible. So, <laughs> it's pretty amazing, though, really. And then there's all different types of fosters. There's um, fosters of India. Let me look that up. Fosters of India. They, I think there's like a malt liquor fosters in India. Let's see. Fosters India. Well, what do you think about this beer? I'm going to get it's some. Really I think it's a very excellent beer. It seems like they're using premium malt because it doesn't have that um, coin like you get with um, I, like Steel Reserve or anything like that. Very decent. Has a very bitter aftertaste to it. Actually, it's kind of bitter at the first sip as well, but yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, the bitterness is strong. The bitterness is strong, but it's not like gross strong huh yeah it seems like the malt is front and center then it's the hops then it's the grain now for somebody that's never tried this beer you think they ought to check it out yeah definitely it's a really good beer they had it on sale at the store last week for a dollar fifty a can you know how much that would be for a six pack Dollar can, dang, that that would be cheap. That wasn't if they were selling it in a six pack, it would be three thirty eight. Wow, <laughs> six pack. Um, I actually kind of think this is a little better than the original. More flavor to it. Mm, oh, I don't know about that. Now that's a hard one, boy. That is a hard one because I love that Foster's Ale. You could drink it like crazy, you know. Yeah, I know. It's very, it's very smooth and crisp. This is not as smooth, but it has a really nice bitter finish to it. That caramel, huh? Yeah. Now let's see. Maybe on your at the bottom of your, uh, you know, the information page, you could put the links to these. Uh, I might do that. Go back on my videos and put the links to these. Yeah, I should do that. Okay, they're showing some real old Foster's bottles from the 1880s. They look like wine bottles. They're saying, uh. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I said William and Ralph Foster were from England. Wrong. Yeah. They were from the United States. Wow. Uh, picture to the right. Foster's Lager from 1895 to 1897. It still had that, like, the bottle, the glass. Yeah. Foster's on it. And then it's saying Victoria Premiums. Pale Ale. Okay, let's see what's going on. You see these companies, they save all these old bottles. So, like, if you go to the Miller Brewery, all right, in uh, Wisconsin, mm. like I did two years ago, they'll take you on down in the caves, and they have all these old Miller bottles from, like, 130 years ago with all the old labels on them. Yeah. Pretty neat to look at, you know. <clears throat> this thing smells really good. I know. Caramel. It's like caramel and um what's that kind of fruit? Like um what is that? Apricot? Yeah, hey, I was about ready to say that. That's funny. Yeah, I was gonna say apricot. And then it tastes like you can definitely taste corn in it to me, like um, Yeah. Like if you go to these Mexican festivals. I go to Mexico sometimes. They have these festivals, and they'll have this corn on the cob, and they're like putting it on a barbecue grill. Yeah. And it's like getting almost brown or black. And yeah. Turning it on these sticks, and then they sell it. It tastes kind of like that. Yeah. It does seem to have just a subtle smokiness to it, a little bit. Just. And, and the corn, it seems well-balanced as well. Um, it's nothing like a, a typical anjong. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's, to me, it's like, considering that Foster's is really about the same price as um, any other mass-produced beer, Yeah. why not buy Foster's? Because it tastes 
better than most of them, in my opinion. The I know. The ale and the lager, right? It's like, why not go with the best one? I mean, you know, we've drank all those, like Dave would call them crap beers, although we don't agree with that. But, you know, you know what I mean? Like cheap beers is what, yeah. he, is what he really means. And uh, so, uh, when they showed a picture of the Foster's Cricket Club. But um, this is probably one of the best of the cheaper beers, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I feel like the, these um, Fosters are very well balanced. Kind of reminds me of the balance that you find in those Japanese beers, like the Korean Ichiban and, and even the Asa Acai. And, oh, and yeah. of those, they, they tend to have a well balance between um, the grain, the malt, and the, and the hops. <clears throat> Which other beers are either like the craft in America is just all hops, and all, and the domestic lagers in America is just all grain. Well, for the most part. Yeah, I was drinking a um, IPA yesterday. An IPA was called um, Southern Prohibition 2015 IPA. Oh, that's the one from this morning, right? That yeah, you posted. I, I, I drank it yesterday, actually, but I. I try to do reviews like ahead of time in case something happens and I don't have time. I'll still have one like saved. But um, so it was like seven and a half, seven point seven percent alcohol and seventy IBU. So yeah, it was really bitter. But I kept drinking it and it almost had like if you watch the video, it's like something's rotten tasting, you know? Yeah. It's like I don't want to drink a beer that tastes rotten. <laughs> <laughs> That's a small brewery, Southern Prohibition. They're not. Yeah too big you know so I don't know how good they are at doing what they're doing but to me this is an ale that's way better than that I gave that one an A minus and I guess I was being a little generous but um this would beat it yeah this is better and plus it's way cheaper that was 259 for that pint can and this was a dollar fifty for a quart so and it tastes better so I really appreciate beers like this because it tends to break the mold just like I commented on your channel i know probably make some people offended but like a lot of ipas they taste the same and just like uh what do you call it coors and budweiser and a few others they taste the same like keystone for example <clears throat> but this breaks the mold it, it's it's more of a uniqueness compared to other beer other um basic cheap beers on the market yeah now it's a little bit heavy yeah and it's got a little bit, maybe too much alcohol, 5.5. .5. If you drink that whole 25.4 ounce can, you're going to get kind of goofy in the head probably. Um, maybe yeah. good to share. Maybe good to share with someone. Um, I think for everyday drinking, like, I would get the Foster's Lager. Yeah. So, like, when I, have, when I go to work, like on a work day, I'll come home from work and the most I'll drink, and this is always the case, the most I ever drink is two beers. Yeah. A can, if I can get a bunch of those cans on when they have them on sale for two for three dollars, yeah. well, why not just buy a whole bunch of cans of Foster's, like maybe four, three eight lagers and one ale, Yeah. At like three to one, and then I could buy, you know, a bunch of them and, uh, Let's see. Eighteen dollars for a case. Yeah. I mean, I would have a lot of beer for eighteen bucks. Yeah, I really wish they would um, sell it in smaller quantities um, all around the United States, like in six packs or twelve yeah. ounce cans, or because, bottles. Huh? Or bottles. Yeah. Because here in California, you can't find any at all. This is a really great beer and all, but it, I'm either in one of two categories. Either I just want to have a small beer, a 12-ounce beer, and this is open, and I don't want to get it stale in the fridge, so I have to drink more than I really want to. Or I want to, when I want a session of beer, I kind of like to move all around. I would like to have a little bit of Foster's, a little bit of Budweiser, maybe uh, IPA. <clears throat> yeah. Or session IPA. IPA would probably me on my butt but you know what I mean. yeah now i'm looking at these old ads from the 1930s they're saying uh, 
Your guests appreciate the best. Foster's Lager, Australia's national beer. And then it's saying over here, a big poster, Foster's Lager, most nourishing. Now they cannot even put that on beer ads today, most nourishing. <laughs> even though scientists, oh, look at this flood. It looked like the brewery got flooded in the 1930s. They're like wow. yeah, 10 feet of water. It looked like every building in the brewery had like water up to the top of the first floor. Oh, dang. I hope they had good insurance. Yeah, I'm looking at this guy. They're standing with the water pouring in. Wow. Oh, total wreck. Um, but yeah, you know, honest doctors or scientists will tell you that beer is good for you. Yep. But since it's dangerous, right? Like any medicine, and this is where people, their thick headedness comes in. Like, <clears throat> Yeah, you sometimes you have to take medicine, right? But if you abuse it, it can become very dangerous. Yeah. Like most people have enough sense to know that uh, beer can mess your mess your life up because it's yeah. alcohol and it's a drug in a sense, in a sense, and it can mess you up. We know all we all know people that are old drunks. Now, yeah. on the other hand. My grandfather, who's still alive, 95 years old, he's a urologist, so he he deals with your like your urinary tract, bladder, yeah. kidneys, and all of that. And he always said, "Oh yeah, drinking beer all the time is really good because it um makes your digestive system work correctly." Yeah. And a lot of times he would tell patients, "Oh, you need to drink a lot of beer," and um not a lot, but you know you need to drink beer, and it'll you that'll make that go away, and um you'd be able to go to the bathroom better and stuff. And then they would say, oh yeah, it really worked. So he didn't advocate abuse of it, but he advocated that it was healthy. Yeah. And it is. So it um, is definitely, but now um, they can't put those ads in there because of the politically correct. Yeah. That kind of remind me when you said that, of uh, Guinness, Guinness's early ads where they had like a toucan flying saying, Guinness is good for you. Yeah, and then, yeah, the toucan, the big uh, tropical bird, and then they would say women who are nursing a baby need to drink um, Guinness because it's good for them if they're nursing, which is true. But now they, oh Lord, you can't say that now. Yeah, even with my family, I and I know this might be kind of controversial, but a lot of my family is very religious, and they believe just drinking beer at all is very bad. But I'm like, uh, all the depends on if you're overindulging. I feel like it's a sin. It's bad if you're just chugging it and drinking all the time. But if you're just drinking with a, with your supper or you're just drinking one or two here and there, it's not bad. It's actually good for you. It like helps you. Like it has a lot of medicinal purposes. I don't think it would be evil if it had any medicinal properties. So they're not Catholic, I'm, I'm guessing. Um, my father's side's all Catholic and my mother's side's all Christian. Well, Christian. I've been to both Catholic and Christian churches. Yeah, well, of course, Catholic, of course, is Christian, but, um, it must be non-Catholic Christians, though. Yeah. Because the Catholic, Catholics, most Catholic people you'll meet are not anti-alcohol. Although yeah. some of the ones I know, some of the ones I know wouldn't wouldn't hurt them to become anti-alcohol. <laughs> but, um, well, Jesus turned water into wine at a wedding party one. That's, that's one of the things I always say. And that's an interesting story now because he didn't say, now go y'all, y'all go get busted up. I know, exactly. The thing at the party was, it's interesting, it's an interesting Bible story because at the party, they said, oh, we ran out of wine, we didn't plan the party correctly. So when you don't plan your party right, you get all screwed up. So they were like in a big panic, you know, because these people at this wedding reception, they want to drink. They don't want, and back in those days, the water was so dangerous because it wasn't purified like today. So if you drink water, you literally, literally could die. So yeah. people just, just did not drink water. Now, so um, Mary went to Jesus and said they ran out of wine. And so then he turned the water into wine. And then when they dipped into those jugs and drank the wine, they said, oh, they, they couldn't believe it because they said, um, this is really something. We can't get over this because 
usually what they do at a wedding is they serve the really good wine at first, the premium stuff. And once people drink enough, they, they start putting out the cheap stuff. And while well, they drink so much, they're kind of like getting crazy. And so they don't even pay attention that they're putting out the junk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but this is incredible because they're putting out the best wine last. Mm. Of course, Jesus, God is not going to make like budget brand wine, right? So, <laughs> yeah. The story is so comical because like even the people are realizing, wait a minute, they saved the best wine to last. Of course, they didn't realize the miracle that happened, but it's so comical, you know. So, but that is what people would do at a party, right? Even today. Yeah. At the beginning of the wedding reception, they might say, Oh, I've got a Michelob and um I've got this Sierra Nevada pale ale, and people would say, Oh, you're getting fancy, but maybe at the end of the party when nobody's looking, they might be putting out old Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> the people wouldn't care because they've already drank for three hours. <laughs> um <clears throat> so, but Back to Foster's. <laughs> They're showing all these old bottles. Foster's Crown Lager. That's the one I told you I wanted to get the Crown Lager. Yeah. Um, let's see. Foster's owns all these Pacific Island companies too, like Fiji Beer. Yeah. I never had that one. No, we don't get it out here in South Pacific Beer. Uh, here's an old hotel and they're drinking beer out. You know, Australia. Let me go get some more beer, and then I'll talk about that geography, how important geography is. Wow, the Crown Lager looks completely different. <clears throat> okay. Australia is a really weird country. 90% of the people live on the coast where the temperature is not too bad and they live yeah. in cities, okay? The middle of the country is where the other 10% of the people live and it's really isolated. They got highways that go across Australia and it's a very big desert. It's a huge desert. It's so big and it's so dangerous. Like you don't drive across this desert by yourself. Yeah. Going convoys, okay? Mm -hmm. Because if you break down, well, now with cell phones and all, they could probably come get you. But back before they had cell phones and all of this, if you broke down, it's not like you're going to say, well, I'm going to wait till the next car or truck drives by. <laughs> that might not happen for three or four days. Wow. So they would even, even truck drivers, they would get in convoys and go with like, five yeah. trucks together in case something happened it's like that movie mad max like they're showing the really isolated parts so they yeah. have they have these little hotels out in the middle of it the desert maybe the closest next town is 200 miles away so the town will be called like anderson hotel you look on a map but that's not really a town it's just a hotel and they got five people that live there and that's it but they're showing a picture here of Yenar Hotel in Yenar, Victoria, and they're drinking Foster's. So if you imagine living way out there, right, in this heat, it's so hot, man. It's like really hot. It's oppressive. It's like really dry with dust flying around everywhere. What kind of beer you think they're gonna wanna drink out there? Yeah. Heavy beers or really light beers like Foster's that they can chug? You know the answer to that. Yeah, definitely. And here's a picture of them shipping Foster's beer to Australian troops in Vietnam. Wow. Australia sent thousands of troops to the Vietnam War. And uh, <laughs> I'm looking at all these pallets of Foster's. <laughs> um, trying to find. Okay, now S.A.B. Miller of India. Um, let me show you this real fast. I went on that website. I didn't really know what to click on there. <laughs> um, I'll help you out. Let's see. I looked up at Foster's Crown Lager. It actually looks very elegant. I want to try it out. It is. <clears throat> Somebody was going to send me some from Australia, but I never got any. 
I don't know. I think he thought I was going to send him something. He came to me. I mean, I don't do all that beer trading. It's a real big headache. Yeah. It's like you've seen my videos in Matherns. Yeah. Why would I want to do beer trading? I, if I drank a new beer from Matherns every day, it would take up my whole life. It's like, well, I don't need the beer trade. It's like I can't keep up with what they've got right there. And now on Foster's India website, it says, damn cold refreshment. They don't use terms like that in America. Damn cold. All right. Uh, Let's see their brands. Who wants to know the country I'm in? Should I and tell them? Oh, yeah. That'll be fine. Um, see, they make that malt liquor Foster's out there. They show in that red and blue bottle. You can. Yeah. Now, see, India, now, this is really something. If you go to India, man, they don't play around. Every beer in India is like 8 or 9% alcohol. Wow. They don't drink this weak stuff. Um, and so, like, Miller and Anheuser-Busch, they all have uh, businesses in India where they sell beer, but all of it's, like, really super strong. Oh, that's the name of it, Foster's Gold. That stuff is no joke. Foster's um, Gold. Foster's Gold. Wow. Like 8% alcohol. If you look on the website, it's right there. They're showing it. Foster's Gold. What, on the homepage? On the SAB Miller of India. Yeah, I'm on there right now. <clears throat> you see those? Uh, they show Foster's Lager. Yeah, I clicked on Foster's, and, and the first thing comes up, it says, damn cold refreshment. Yeah, if you look at the bottom of the photo they've got, of the, of the page, they've got a photograph of all the Foster's lineup. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I see it now. Okay. Huge bottles, those red and blue bottles. Yeah. They don't sell the ale. Like India, in India, man, if you go there, it looks like the only thing they like to drink is lagers. They don't like ale too much. That's weird. So, yeah, so <clears throat> they either have Foster's, which is 4.9% over there. And then they have the Foster's Gold, which is like, like I said, seven or yeah. seven <clears throat> or something like that. And then they have a beer called Knockout. <laughs> yeah, I see that. Knockout. I mean, what is that? What, wow. do you think that? what do you think Knockout's about? I'm not quite sure. It kind of, I'm, what comes to my mind is probably like a cheap malt liquor, something that these chuggers on YouTube would like. Yeah, it's like one of the most popular beers in India, man. Knockout. And they That's got correct. Hayward's 500. It's really funny, you know, because uh, these beers are really strong. I, but, of course, I'd like to try them all. Miller Ace. That's the real strong Miller beer. Look at Miller Ace. <laughs> oh. Is that like our Miller Fortune? Because it looks very similar. Yeah, it's right. It's like... Um, Seven percent alcohol. Wow, eleven percent. That's crazy. I know. I like seven percent. Oh, it's some serious stuff. But uh, uh, okay. The first uh, Foster's oil cans arrive in the United States. They resemble motor oil cans, so naturally Americans nicknamed them Foster's oil cans. Uh, Nineteen eighty. bunch of different stuff happened. I'm trying to find Foster's uh, ale, but they're just not talking about it. They make a stout out there. Oh, well, anyway, um, it is part of SAB Miller. Um, let me get on the SAB Miller website. People might know I have a lot of websites from beer companies saved on my favorites. <laughs> But man, if I could get a hold of Miller Ace, I'd be getting on that so quick. But you can't get too many huh? years of but it's very few. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I never uh, well, knew Miller was this big. I always thought Miller was I always knew Miller was bigger than Paps, but I never knew they were that big. Huh. Huge, huge. Um, 
and then if you get on Anheuser Busch's website, it's like ten times bigger than that. Yeah. And they've got their own. Like they'll tell you if you get on the uh, the Anheuser Busch InBev website, it'll be like, okay, here's a map of the world, and you can click on different countries, and it'll tell you, well, here's our website for China, and it's like take your whole day. <laughs> Okay, I'm looking on the uh, SAB Miller and I see pictures of Grosh. They make Grosh too. <laughs> they bought them. They went around buying everybody, you see. Wow. Um, well, see, Miller. Okay, Miller was owned by the Miller family, right? Yeah. <clears throat> 1966, the lady that inherited it she inherited it because she was the next in line yeah did not she was like some people in your family she did not believe in drinking so she said she didn't feel comfortable owning a beer company so she sold Miller to some investment company yeah well they turned around and flipped it you know they have these TV shows where they flip houses so yeah. they came <clears throat> and uh, they sold it after three years. They sold it to. Uh, they started negotiating with Philip Morris. You know what Philip Morris makes? Cigarettes. Yeah. So Philip Morris bought Miller, and they owned it until 2002 when they sold out to SAB. But from what I understand, from what I understand, um, Philip Morris, which is now called Altria still owns about 45 percent of the stock in miller they're wow. like they're like the biggest shareholders so they're still like a major player in the game so sab has to kind of listen to what philip morris says because they got so much money invested in it but then <laughs> see the beer companies they were like trying to like say well people are going to jump on our case because cigarettes and beer you know what i mean so they trying to like yeah. separate themselves even though they still kind of own a lot of it uh, uh, they're just talking about Australia and they're saying the bitterness for Foster's is three out of five, which would be six out of ten. I think the ale is a little higher than that. Um, they're not talking about the ale, so so much for that. Yeah. Plus, most Americans, if they drink Foster's, they're drinking the blue can, wouldn't you wouldn't you say? Yeah. I would agree. <clears throat> I think the blue can is better for um, parties, better for um, sessioning. Just overall, more smoother and crisper than the than the green can. But the green can, to me, kind of has a little bit more flavor, and it seems to be a little bit more bitter. I agree with that. It it has more alcohol. You feel it more. I'm getting about over half into the can so you start to feel it um i mean it's not super strong but it's not exactly weak it's got more flavor but on the other hand i think foster's lager you could it's really much better for chugging it's kind of light yeah so it's, it's like whatever you feel like drinking it's like if you wanted to go eat some pie and you wanted to buy you might want to eat apple pie or coconut cream pie or uh cherry pie, but they might all be good, right? It just depends yeah. on what you wanted to eat. I think Foster's Lager and Foster's Ale are like a tie. Yeah, definitely. Like they're equal. <clears throat> they both have their own pros. Yeah, and and if you ask me what's the downside to it, um, I'm not aware of any downside. Yeah. Frankly, like a pretty much perfect beer to me. Yeah, now I drink a lot of beers, different beers. I don't drink a lot, but I drink a lot of different beers. And there are some that have downsides, like I told you that, that, that Southern Prohibition IPA. Well, when it starts having a rotten taste, that's not a, that's, that's not an upside. Is it? Yeah. It's like, I never drank a Foster's beer. I never drank any Miller beer that had a rotten taste now, but I'll say this. Um, Miller Fortune. 
that beer does sometimes have like a nasty taste. I know. Same here. I feel the same way. The more I drink that beer, the more I hate it. I'm like, yeah, I can see why nobody's buying this beer. And I think Miller knows that. And they're like, well, we'll just let it slowly die out. And then we'll forget about it and pretend like it never happened. <laughs> yeah, Chris believes it's one of the best Miller had. But I told him, man, I had like two of those and I got a headache a little bit afterwards. And plus, it didn't taste that very well, especially on the second one. Hey, look, the first time I did a review of that beer, I was excited about it. Like, it, the first impression was that it was really good, right? But, yeah. but even then, if you watch the video, and I was the first person on planet Earth, by the way, to do a written review or a video review for that beer, because the Miller people came and gave me a bottle a month before it existed, so-called. Yeah. And I said, the beer had a weird hot buttered popcorn taste. Like <laughs> the movie theater? Yeah. Hey, but that's a real bad sign. When you're making a lager, if it has a taste like butter or popcorn, that is a sign that something's wrong with the beer. It is not supposed to taste like popcorn or butter. So right then and there, that was a sign that something was wrong. And I think the Miller people probably in private drank it and said, and Ontario from Louisiana Beer Reviews, he's right. This beer sucks, but what are we going to do now? Look how much money we put into it. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, they're like, we're screwed. We we made the beer. We got to put it out on the market. And they ran advertisements on TV for, what, a month? Yeah. And then no more ads. <clears throat> now you see it in one little spot on the shelf. And what? In about two or three years, it won't even be around, will it? Yeah. Yeah, it's like Budweiser. They made Budweiser American Ale. So yeah. Everybody drank it. Their first impression was, wow, this is really good, a Budweiser Ale. Man, it's really got a lot of flavor. Oh, blah, blah, blah. But then if you watch people drink this stuff, they started making comments like, man, this thing has a weird bubblegum taste. <laughs> it's like. That's a pretty cool bottle, though. It's very simple and straightforward. But it's like, I don't want to drink a beer that tastes like bubble gum. So yeah. it was real quick. People turned against this beer. And then nobody bought it. And when the new people bought Anheuser-Busch, they were like, hey, man, this beer is gone. And it only lasted four yeah. years. They were trying to make a craft beer, but they botched it. I mean, they made some good craft beers at Anheuser Bush, but this wasn't one of them. But Lord, I wish I could get one more bottle just to drink it, but I'll never see it again. Well, I guess we pretty much wore this out, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that collection, folks. Nice. <laughs> Look at those stubby bottles. They're getting faded because of sunlight. But um, there's the original Ice House. Look at that little short neck bottle. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> well, that's that. We drank it. We liked it. We recommend it. Yeah, excellent beer. End of the story. People can get on the websites on their own, and really, they're not handicapped. Yep. <laughs> Do your own well, research. My straight up um, comment for everybody out there is: Don't be a beer snob. Check it out. Don't be a beer snob because you could get some really good beer for three dollars for two quarts if you see the sales ad. Yeah, just because it's cheap or owned by a big company doesn't mean it's not good. That's right. That's right. It doesn't mean it's going to be good, but it doesn't mean it's not going to be good. Yeah, definitely. So that means you got to try it. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for inviting me over to this. Yeah, no problem. <clears throat> I'll, I'll try to put all the descriptions down below, the SAB Miller and the Miller India. And also, I'll put the 
I'll put the description of Jay's page, Louisiana Beer Reviews, so you guys can check that out as well. But until um, next time, YouTube, thanks for watching. Thank you.